Huge show today. John Casey's back and Joe Healy from behind the scenes at the Portland Trailblazers. And I've got the secret behind Ben Simmons' success in the NBA preseason. And the NBL's biggest story, the Baines and Adam Ford tunnel blow-up. We have exclusive details. Let's get into it. This is The Basketball Show with Shane the Hammer Heel. What they gonna say next? One of that, shot clock rolls to single digits. Doyle gets away from the screen from Golding and knocks down another three. What a final quarter this has been from Milton Doyle. Milton Doyle, all NBL last season. Where's he rank right now? Right off the top. Give, give me the, where's the camera? Where's my, give me my camera because <laughs> Milton Doyle right now is the best player in the NBL. And what I love about him is he can be patient. He takes his time. He plays within the systems. But when it's time to go, we saw it against Melbourne United. He put a foot right on their throat. He isolated, made big shots. And I love everything about him right now. I love this. I've got a Bryce Cotton and Jalen Adams calling me in the pocket. But does this right mean, now? Hammer, you were wrong about Tasmania? Not at all. Why would I, why would I be you wrong You said Tasmania weren't going to make the four. Yeah, I, I still don't think that they will. Um, I think we'll know a little bit more about Tazzy when they get Magne back. Will he make a difference? Because right now, Lee is okay. He's serviceable, but I don't think at the right level. Let's not forget, United are going to bring back JLA in that sort of game as well. I love Tasmania, but I just don't think that they'll win it, is what my comment was last week. Not okay. make the four. So right now, Milton Doyle better than Bryce Cotton and Joe The way Adams. he's playing, he's playing better than both of those guys. Uh, but we'll... You know, let's see whether he can keep it up. Let's see what happens this week. Talent coming into the league. The New Zealand break is already loaded. Bring in ex-NBA talent with Lamb coming in. Well, I mean, just the fact that he played NBA doesn't mean that he's going to, you know, have automatic success. Um, but he could. I mean, um, I look forward to being able to see him as a replacement. They're going to need him. It was a disappointing loss for New Zealand last week. So they're going to need him to be able to fit in straight away. And obviously he gets that NBA game in as well. Travelling now to play NBA teams. They'll be one to watch coming back. Shane Hill with the secret sauce to Ben Simmons' success. It's incredible. Uh, you know, I got, the, I got the lowdown. Ben Simmons did some work in the offseason. He hit the gym. We saw him. He put out videos. He's stronger. He's fitter. He worked on his shot. He, he actually hit the gym and did some work. It's, who would have thought that if you get your body right, you get some shots up, you put some time in, that you'd have success in the preseason? And um, I hope he does well. I really do. Because we know the last couple of seasons, he hasn't had his mind right. He hasn't done this sort of work. Yeah, that's how you build confidence because that's what every pro does. You get your butt in the gym and you do the work to build confidence to get the results. And I hope it continues for him. Do the work, get the success. It is great to see Ben early days doing well this season. Victor Wembanyama, is he the real deal? Well, we've seen one preseason game and, you know, they've, he's earmarked as a generational player. Um, he's got the tools, hasn't he? I mean, when you're that tall and you can put the ball on the floor, we know he needs to work on his strength and that's going to take a little bit of time. But, uh, you know, really good start for him after, you know, a, a, an off-season that wasn't great. You know, when he went to the Summer League, you know, there was a few question marks, but good start for him. Hopefully he continues as well. Uh, and just shifting away from America and Australia and looking at the EuroLeague uh, tipping off and uh, a great scenario. We've got so many Aussies in the NBA and, and not as many men playing around in Europe at the moment. Dang Adel is there. But uh, on the women's side, we've got Ezzy McBegger, Shyla Hill, Darcy Garvin, all involved in the EuroLeague. Yeah, so Ezzy kicked off really well with her new team in the EuroLeague, had 20 points. Darcy Garvin playing there. Shyla had her first game in the, in the EuroLeague. It's going to be tough for them. They're a lower league, uh, lower team in the EuroLeague, but the top team uh, in Poland. And Shyla plays against Beck Allen's team, Valencia. So that'll be interesting. I don't think Beck Allen will probably play coming back from the WNBA and probably won't need to, to be honest. But uh, yeah, great experience for all of those players playing at the highest level outside the WNBA. And have a look at some of have a, the atmosphere. Playing in Europe... Well, you was, played there. Tell us about it. It was unbelievable atmosphere. I, I loved every moment playing in Greece and in Italy and the fans are just so unique. And, you know, a lot of the times we buy into talking about, you know, the NBL being the second best league in the world. Well, it's, I mean, it's simply not. We, we love the fact that it's probably one of the leagues that probably brings more NBA players in, which is something we can hang our hat on, but it's not the best league as far as talent goes. They've got guys over there in the Euro League that are making three times 
you know, or two times the whole salary cap here in the NBL. So great standard. Baines is furious. Oh no, he's going to get tossed. Great job by the official yeah. to walk away. So much. Oh, the geez, sunshine stash well and truly lived up to its name. The story's been unfolding all week. Matt Logue, you have the latest for the Logue down. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Obviously, a you know, massive story. The biggest story in the NBA at the moment. And I think Sh- Shane will come in with his, his thoughts on this. It's, it's, it's been brewing, obviously, a, a blow up in the tunnel. Um, obviously, an elbow that sparked Port, you know, Baines's reaction to the referees. Um, and it's been in the headlines all week. We're reaching the climax. I think it'll go to the judiciary tomorrow uh, on Thursday. So, yeah, Shane, you have your say, and then I'm happy to well, come I've got in a couple with where of things. things are at. Not so much a say for me, more questions. But I, I, I read what Brisbane put out, and mm. based on what they put out, it was a foregone conclusion that Adam Ford's done the wrong thing, everything mm. else. I'm not sure, based on some people that I've mm. spoken to, that that's necessarily fact. So I can't wait to see what happens there. And secondly, you know, Baines, he's dealt with a lot over the years. Mm. that hasn't been spoken about is mm. it time does he need to take a few weeks off because that's not normal behavior from somebody of his sort of experience and mm. when you're dealing with a lot of emotions sometimes you need to protect him from himself well the first question there is that um based off the incident is that brisbane did go hard um Stu lash the basketball operations officer there he he claims that adam ford was waiting uh, for aaron baines uh, in the tunnel at half time after this incident um, I've spoken to multiple sources, uh, including Cairns claim that that is not the case, that Adam Ford was waiting in the tunnel at halftime for his assistant coaches. That's normal. Um, That's normal you're waiting practice. to get your statistics. Uh, we can also reveal that um, the sheds were opposite each other. So you had Brisbane on one side, which is pretty common practice, and Cairns on the other side. At this point when Ford was there, my understanding is, waiting for the stats, is that um, Baines was already in the sheds at that point. Um, I then understand that um, Baines left the sheds and at this point it, it, multiple sources claim that it was Aaron Baines that instigated the first words to Ford. Uh, at this point they then come together um, and it's claimed um, from Baines's end that um, there was um, a, a, a finger and potentially a push. Um, this has been denied from Ford on, on that side of things. And, and where we sit, guys, is that, as I said in the opener, this will, will go to the judiciary on uh, the hearing on, on Thursday night, and it's the NBL has video of this incident. So this will, be, this will be the key. This will define it all, because there's been some charges handed out that have been referred, um, but the video will be conclu- conclusive. Um, y- your second question around Aaron, there was, um, you know, he has been through some tough times, you know, post-NBA, um, there's been obviously that, that horrific injury in Tokyo, um, and there is some talk that, you know, before that game that maybe, you know, um, he, he shouldn't have played. Um, but regardless of that, he did cop a, a stray elbow. Um, but that was normal basketball. Yeah, stuff. yeah. No, That's not enough to uh, get that Oh, reaction. 100%. And, 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 and it's on, like, you know, Gaze was in commentary. Andrew Gaze was in commentary. And he said yeah. that that reaction was... was for that elbow was over yeah. the top and he, he had to go up the referee. So he'll also be potentially sanctioned for his behaviour towards the referees. I think he regrets the behaviour. He knows that. Yeah. But um, it's a fair question to ask in terms of, um, you know, is there time potentially just to take some... some take some, a breath. Sometimes you need yeah. a breath to get away from things. Yeah. It, so. Look, it's a, it's a full-on incident, but I think it's, it's important, guys, to clarify that um, it has been quite a full-on towards um, Ford and Brisbane have had their say. Um, Cairns have stayed quiet. But my understanding is that, yeah, there, there, there is another side to this, this story. You've got some word on the Adelaide 36ers. Yeah, look, um, obviously 0-4 start to the season for the 36ers. Uh, terrible pre-season. It's the worst start to a season since 2002. There is pressure on coach CJ Bruton. Look, let's be honest, he is a legend of this game. Um, six-time championship winner. Um, and no one disputes that. Um, but if... I'm hearing and reliably, if results keep going this way, there's big pressure building and Adelaide may be forced to make a change there. Um, I know for a fact that, you know, they have to start thinking about, like, if results go this way. So my understanding is those conversations are potentially, you know, um, happening. Um, he's but, uncontracted at the end of this yeah, season. Yeah, so he's off contract at the end of the season. This is his third season with the Adelaide 36ers and his contract does end. 
Um, and look, a massive game this weekend, guys, uh, against um, at home against the Illawarra Hawks. Uh, he needs results, and he needs res- results qu- results quickly. And um, it just seems to be Adelaide for a long time now. They've been a bit of a basket case, haven't they? Like, mm. like you've got management on one one you know narrative and then the coach on another and that's even about the import like initially it was going to be a guard then they wanted a forward last week well you mm. broke the news of dj vasilovic yeah and then now all of a sudden there's there's genuine interest in in dj and dj who was uh you know got an out at the nba uh, with the sydney kings to go pursue the nba ended up being on an exhibit 10 deal now he's um you know was supposed to play g league and now he's decided well i want to come home adelaide are definitely interested it just means it can the kings that who own his rights and there's a bit of a buyout can they finalize that but like back to DJ, like, well, how's he home now? It hasn't even started yet. I thought yep. the whole thing was he was going to go to the G League and try and force himself into mm. an NBA contract. It's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a fair question, and I, I've reached out to him. And there's no reply at this point, um, but. I, it's a, it's a, that's the million dollar question isn't it guys like why why does he want to come home does he want to stick with that there may be factors at play there but all we do know for a fact is that Adelaide are keen DJ's expressed a desire to come back to the NBL and at the, this point he can't go Sounds to the Kings like it'll happen the Kings can't accommodate That'll him happen. so but the other question is do Adelaide need him like they've got Trey Kell they've, you know do they need a, a guard I not a perfect fit a lot of guards I mean, There's a lot of guards. Yeah. I think it's a fair... You don't get cool. a two-time champion Australia on your doorstep every day, but uh, that one all to play out. There's the breaking news with the Logue Down. Hoops Highlights brought to you by Boost Mobile. The leaders in prepaid the biggest network at a great rate and the Chicago Bulls getting their pre-season off right. Well, have a look at the bench. A little bit of excitement in the NBA preseason, but let's get to Boston. How about this? Up for the yam and no siree. Get that out of here. Jason Tatum getting his reception cut off. That wouldn't happen with Boost Mobile. Restoring connection for you. It's Basconia, Nico Manning, Banny and finding Tata Senekerskis. Lots happening in the NBL, Nathan. Ricky Bobby Clinton there for the shake and the bake for the next star, helping himself to 30 points. He was incredible in that big win as well. And shot goes up here, a brick from the Kiwi. But have a look at Travis cleaning up the mess. Joining us for points made, it's the Mayor of Adelaide, the the man who owns the media down there, Mr. John Casey. And as a media man, the NBL judiciary is under the pump this week. Should it be open to the media case? Nate, I didn't realise you'd step down as mayor, but thanks very much. I'll expect the robes and the uh, and the change to come through in the mail at some stage if you're abdicating. But uh, look, of course, there is no doubt at all that the media should be allowed in to hear these hearings. I think I always start from a point of why not with these things. Why wouldn't you have the people in there? Now, if there's information shared during the hearing that is private, that is personal, that is confidential, the commissioner, the man in charge, should have the ability to say, look, that is off the record. Uh, in fact, he should then take it in camera and order the journalists out because journalists can't be trusted, let's face it. So if there's information that is of that nature, then he can close it and say, I'll hear that. And then as soon as you've given me that information, I will open it back up to the journalists. It's the only way to have transparency. No doubt about that case. And 10 years ago, no one cared, cared about the NBL, so it wasn't even a big deal. But now we're becoming relevant again. People have a passion and care about these issues and talk about transparency. The media have to be in there to be able to report it, just like they do with the uh, with the AFL, just like they do with the NRL. We need people there reporting from outside the courtroom to be able to tell everybody exactly what's gone and how it affects their teams and, and what's happening. Nice to see the two of you agreeing. Uh, points made. We're not meant to be <laughs> friends here. Uh, I'll throw to you first on this one, Shane. You said years ago they didn't care about the NBL. Uh, now we're on a global stage that NBA time by NBL games happening. How big a deal are they now several years into this iteration? Well, I, I, I'm a bit on the fence with this one. It's a big deal. Of course it is. You get a chance to play against the NBA teams, but who really wins out of it? And for me, it's the players. The players that are trying to make the NBA get an opportunity to be able to show their skills in front of NBA scouts. Now, those scouts will know them anyway, so it's not going to be any surprise there, but that's another way to be able to attract players. But you've got to ask the question, does it actually help the NBL teams? We saw last year, the Adelaide 36ers, they went and put on a show, won a game, but came 
came back and then didn't didn't even make the NBL playoffs. And some of the powerhouse teams now in the NBL don't even want to go and play in these games. So it'll be interesting to see how it affects Cairns and New Zealand. But for me, I wouldn't want to be going if I was running a team. I like the idea, guys. I think for those reasons you mentioned, Hammer, but also just for the status of the NBL to be seen to be doing something different, like they would be if they had those tribunals open to journalists. They can lead the way with that. The AFL are going down that track very shortly, I would suspect. So, But back onto this subject, yes, I agree totally because where else in the world does an Australian domestic team get to play against an international team? It adds cred. It is a great opportunity for the players, as you say, and no other sport can do it. Imagine Adelaide United, the soccer team, going over to play AC Milan or playing one of the big teams in Europe or playing Tottenham Hotspur. It's just a fantastic opportunity. I think the branding of the NBL on an NBA court looks fantastic. And I know there are problems with it, what it did to Adelaide last year. Cairns are playing uh, as we record this and they're undermanned. They don't have their full team there, but the opportunities far outweigh or the positives far outweigh the negatives. Is there a chance that it markets the league in the, in the, to the level that better players then want to come and play here? Oh, there's no doubt that clubs would be using that as exposure for these guys in the NBA. But I think we're getting that anyway. I think the NBA has done a terrific job of being able to attract players for less money than they can get into the Euro League for the exposure to get back to the NBA. The pipeline of our guys come from the NBL to the NBA is getting long right now. Yeah, sorry for letting the team down, guys, and agreeing with everything that Hammer's saying. But again, I come back to my original point of I look at it from a why not scenario. I can't find a reason not to have these NBL, NBA games. So many positives. And it does attract players and eyeballs to our competition. And it's only going to get better. Every time we see Alex Saar going off in Perth like he did against Adelaide or Bobby Clintman tearing it up as he was in the game in Queensland, well, a few other people are now looking and I think the competition can only benefit from all that's going on. Well, we don't always like agreements on points made, but they do say two great minds and two of the greatest right here. Great to have John <laughs> Casey with us today, and that is Points Made. Good on you, Case. Super coach is heating up after round two. Many teams got cooked this week by putting the C next to Tyler Cook, but there is still hope. It's a long season ahead, Hammer. I know you're ready to tell us how well you went, but I need to talk to the people <laughs> at home first and give them hope and give some tips this week. In super coach and in life, you get what you pay for. So if you're going to pay low for something, it better be an appreciating asset. So if you're holding on to low value players, they better be going up in value. So we're talking Henschel at Perth. Not sure if he's going to get the minutes. Now might be the time to move on. Ben Eyre at South East Melbourne. If he's appreciated all he's going to, now's the time to sell. But if you've got a young asset that's moving up in value, like maybe a Lockie Oldbridge, now could be the time to jump on. Same with your premiums. You pay up, you get the results. This week you're choosing between Bryce Cotton. You're choosing between Jalen Adams, it might be Shane, your man, Milton Doyle, or it could be just someone who's ready to rise out of Illawarra in J-Rob, Justin Robinson. That is what we're talking about this week. Hammy, you had a good week for your team, didn't you? Mate, now all of that aside, great advice that you've just given, but you told me last week, do not get rid of Mitch Creek. Hold on to him. And what I did is I got rid of him, because I'm a rookie. It's one... Like, one, one ah, hold on, hold on, let me have him a say. And then, and then I brought in Doyle. He's my captain. Um, and I've got Galloway, no, Valentine I added as well. So, mate, I've traded and we've gone up. Not that anything against Mitch Creek, because he'll come back. He'll have some good games. But I actually took care of you, mate, as a rookie on the weekend. You did well. You took, you took care of Tom Hirsch, who, who likes to call him a That's super right. coach expert. He is. That is the biggest deal here. But... Uh, it's, it's a long season, so it's yeah, one okay. strategy. So, so I say, like, oh, I just like, settle down, if you've mate. got Creek, stay with him, is what I said last week, but now is the time to move him out. He has only a single You're game. You're a week, week. late, mate. There's, there's the Super Coach scores this week. You see there, Hammers team, 311, taking care of the Hershey Bars at 281. Don't worry about my oh, score down easy. the bottom there. We will bounce back this week. But, Hammy, you did very well. All uh, doubles this week, though, mate, coming up. Well, there's lots I'm going to get doubles. 400. I tell you, who's, who are you going to captain this week? That's the big one. You look there, I'm Nathan Sobey out of the box. Milton Doyle, he served you well this week. That was the top scorer across round two. Look at Nathan Sobey there getting done. And you're talking to someone who traded out Bobby Clinton before round two. So uh, Bobby well, Clinton absolutely you know, the other bananas, one too, mate, is I've got Usher on the bench. So, you know, he's got two games. Do I bring him in for either Galloway or, or Valentine as well? The That's start, a big one. The start-sit questions. They're the big ones we asked. Big round mate, this week. It changes the way you watch a game. 
It does. I'm watching a game and I'm thinking everything about super coach points rather than the strategy of the game as I'm sitting there having a little frothy. Hammer, we love that you're hooked. We love that 20,000 <laughs> Australians are hooked on super coach. Best of luck this week. Make sure you keep an eye on round four coming up where you only have three teams on the double. Melbourne United, South East Melbourne, Adelaide. Keep that in mind with your trades this week and all the best with round three of super coach. And the people have asked for it. We've listened to you. It's Joe Healy coming to us all the way from the Portland Trailblazers. Hey guys, yes, checking in with you from Portland. I'm at the Motor Centre this morning with the Breakers. They've just had their morning shoot around, loosened up a little bit before the game against the Blazers tonight. It was their first time inside the Motor Centre as well, so good for them to sort of uh, get get used to the surroundings. I'd say it's quite intimate for an NBA arena. I spoke to Tob Abercrombie the other day. He's done a few of these exhibition games, so knows what to expect. Some of the other guys dead set literally like skipped in here. They're so excited. Um, I've been with the team for a couple of days now. There's been plenty happening. Anthony Land came in. He was thrown into the deep end, scrimmaging pretty much straight away, learning all the plays. So that was pretty cool to experience from sort of behind closed doors. The guys caught up with round repair on the first night, so really nice to see him and see how comfortable he is with his new home and the organisation. Uh, Duop Reith and Matisse Thibel are around the place too, so awesome to see them. It'll be interesting to see how Duop goes, given that he's only just arrived with the group, whereas Matisse obviously pretty well established, but it's a completely new dynamic with the Blazers, with this city this season. Uh, I spoke to a couple of the assistant coaches. They did say that even though Dame has departed the organisation, that the, the mood is still pretty good and they're, they're pretty happy with where they're going in the next couple of years. Uh, but that's pretty much it from me. As I just said, the, uh, the Breakers, they've just gone. They've gone to, to shower up. They'll have lunch. They'll have treatment. They'll have a nap if they've got time this afternoon. Then when we'll, we'll be back here for the game this evening. I cannot wait for it. And I also can't wait to be back in the studio with you guys in a couple of weeks' time. So I'll see you then. This is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.